Good evening and welcome to our regular scheduled select board meeting of Tuesday, March 26, 2024. Being the time of 7.02, we'll call this meeting to order. If everyone could rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. First item on our agenda tonight is the Walpole's um, Farmer's Market. I think we have, Nancy, are you here to speak on? Um, I'm Nancy Dayan. This is Jen Karnakis. We are the, are we supposed to just stop talking, by the way? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Um, we're the uh, co-chairs of the farmers market. We stepped up last year, took two of us to fill the shoes of Carol Johnson, who had resurrected the market about seven years ago. Um, she secured Springbrook Park for the market, and so we're here to um, seek permission to use it again this year. The market runs every Saturday starting June 8th uh, through October 19th. Uh, we start setting up at 8 a.m. The market opens at 9 a.m. and runs till 1 p.m. We boast four local farmers. Um, we have also the uh, Norfolk Aggie Abundance Garden and the Walpole School Gardens who all come and su supply um, wonderful produce to our shoppers. We also have lots of bakers and makers and um, artisans and artists and all kinds of things at the market. It's a really fun time. Um, we run the market, we have a committee. Uh, two of our members are here, Mr. Walpole, 2023, Rich McCarthy, and uh, Silpa Pandey, um, and also Kathy Garvin and um, Wendy Doyle, who is one of our farmers. So they help us keep things running. We have entertainment every week. Um, we've had musicians every week last year. Uh, this year we were thrilled to receive a grant from the um, Walpole Cultural Council to support entertainment, so we're hoping to expand and have a little more variety of different types of entertainment this year. Um, last year we did secure a grant from the Mass Farmers Association to help support our farmers in providing um, fresh produce to shoppers who might be in need. So we've done a lot in the past year. We're hoping to expand this year and we hope that we can do it at Springbrook Park again. It's a great location right here downtown. Lots of parking, lots of people come through, lots of you come through. Thank you for supporting us every week. And that's right. it. Well, Jen? Nancy, thank you. I and I just say, I have actually we have our reusable bags, so when you come to visit us, you don't have to use plastic. So we have one for everybody. So we yes. it's not a bribe. <laughs> thank you, Jen. Yeah, it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> Support it. Thanks. There you go. So, Nancy, Nancy is Jen. the committee still taking applications, or how would one? Um, well, we wanted to make sure we were going to secure the location before we took the, um, applications, but we do, we'll start taking applications. You can find us on um, social media, on Facebook, Facebook and on Instagram. You can email us at farmersmarketwalpolema at gmail.com. Um, and yeah, we're starting to take vendor um, applications mm -hmm. for vendors. We're also seeking volunteers, if anyone would like to come or knows groups, especially um, kids who might need um, community, service. community service or something um, to help our vendors set up and break down in the morning. Excellent. Did any members of the board have any questions or comments? No? All right. Wild Willie will be back, though. You want to let your boys know? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Certainly. There's so many great things about the Waffles Farmer's Market. I try to go myself often and um, often leave with way too many desserts, <laughs> along with some great fresh produce. Yes. <laughs> um, so we're thankful for the Farmer's Market and for the committee for doing so much work. And anything we can do on our end to help promote the Farmer's Market, um, please reach out to any of the members. Of the we will. Board. We have some ideas. We'll be in touch. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> All right, Ben, do you want to start with a motion? I would make a motion to approve the request of Farmers Market, Walpole Farmers Market Management to use Springbrook Park on Saturdays from June 8th to October 19th, 2024, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. for the Walpole Farmers Market. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We have a vote, 5-0-0. Zero, zero. All right, we look Thank forward to another luck. great season. We'll see you there. I will be there. 
Next item on the agenda tonight, we have the Veterans Service Officer, Ian Rogers. Ian is, is new to the, to the WAPL um, Veterans Office, and we're still very excited that you're here. So what are you here to this evening to talk about? Well, this is day two, so I'm going to be reading from this paper. I'm here to request the town common on May 27th uh, with the close of Elm Street between Maine and West for the annual observance of Memorial Day. And I'm still working on the Memorial Day agenda, but the second I have that done, I'll get it sent out to you guys. Great. Should look fairly similar. We already have our uh, guest speaker lined up. We're already previewing his speech, and it, it's looking pretty good. All right. Does any members of the select board have any questions or comments? All right, easy then, Ian. No, uh, ben, do we have a motion? I'd make a motion to approve the request of the Veterans Service Officer to use the Town Common on May 27, 2024, with the close of Elm Street between Main and West Street for the annual observance of Memorial Day. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We have a vote, 5 0 0. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. Next item tonight is uh, we have a number of boards and commit committees um, and reappointments this evening. Well, the first one that we are going to discuss is the permanent building committee. We have three candidates for two positions. Um, so we will go through and have each candidate um, briefly come up and speak to the board and allow the boards to have quest um, ask questions of the candidates. So uh, first we have John Conroy. John, would you like to come up and speak to the board for a minute? Thank you. Um, my background, I know some of you know, a lot of you don't. I'm a 77 graduate of Wentworth, got a degree in civil engineering. I've been in construction since 78. I've been as low as a foreman to superintendent, project manager, chief estimator, and vice president. Uh, my first town volunteer work was digging the holes for the original uh, leeches up there back in 1972. Uh, for my career, I've built schools, hospitals, airports, sports venues, Gillette, TD Garden, and so on. Public construction has been a big part of my life because that's the companies I've worked for. So I'm very versatile and knowledgeable in Chapter 149, which is the rip and read bids, and the 149A, which we're doing now for the Bird Middle School, which is CM. Um, I've worked with just about every sub or contractor that's come by over the years. Somehow either we've, we've worked with them, for them, or, or whatever. So I'm very, very knowledgeable of the business. I was appointed to the Permanent Building Committee in 1988. And so it's 36 years now. Uh, I became chairman in about 2003, right after the um, high school. And the first project we had was a library. And as a chairman, we came in a million and a half under, turned all that back in, and we came in on time. Since that time, Chairman of the Police, Fire, Senior Center all came in under budget and on time. Uh, one of the things I've brought to the committee is my management skills in the fact that I've done a bunch of things that seems to have taken hold on the state itself. One of the things I required is the contractor to be at all the meetings because what was happening is you have the architect over here and you never hear about the contractor. When they're both in the room, Meetings go a lot more simpler. There's none of this pointing. Uh, the other thing I, I started was getting the building maintenance involved because as a landlord myself, I want stuff that's going to hold up forever, and I want to know what the end user, which in this case is Donnie Anderson. He came to all our meetings for all, all those projects. He's, he's the one that says, yeah, I want the toilets off the floor so we can mop under them. I need the tiles because you go halfway up. He had a lot of great suggestions, and that has been adopted by the whole state as part of the, like the bird middle with the 12 people. Um, at the start of design, I requested both the fire and police to go out to the various entities of, of a police station, a fire station with the architect we were hiring to go ask them, like the detectives, lead detective, go ask this guy how it's working, a dispatcher, so that when they came back, they had an idea of what worked, what didn't, to avoid change orders. That's a very key in the building. Change orders kill a, a project. That worked very well. Um, the other thing I've done is, I always like to cite 
maintenance design so that we're not having something that looks pretty but you can't maintain it like I don't like concrete stairs on a walkway I know I get a little detail but like the high school because now you can't take a sidewalk plow and do it you got to do it by hand uh, my own and also um, my own personal experience is is uh, functionality once it's turned over to make sure everything works for everybody um, I also bottom line you give me a project this is what you got for money we're gonna stay within that never want to go out so since I've taken over chairman we've never had to go back to town meeting because you got to work within it you give us the money it comes to uh, an override that's all we get we're not going back we're gonna keep it tight and give everybody what they want and what they voted for but we don't want to go over and in closing I'd like to say all my years I've been happy that this has worked out well it's been real nice 36 years keep on going and it's I'd like to continue so thank you all right thank you Jack um, no, I'm just saying thank you for, oh, thank for, yeah, for, for, no for standing forward I'm going to open up to the board any members of the board have questions for Jack or would you guys Yep. I have one, yeah. Uh, so first off, Jack, thanks for your, your service to the town in this capacity. I know that you just went through the litany of projects you worked on and working for the PBC, so very appreciative of that. Um, you touched on you know, some of the projects back in 2003 or, or even before that. Um, you know, originally the PBC was brought together as a project management entity, right? They needed to oversee the projects. There wasn't anybody from the town to do that, didn't have that capacity. Um, it seems like over the last 20 years, certainly in the last five years, with the advent of OPMs and, and project managers, contractors being a little more sophisticated, that the needs for the Permanent Building Committee have shifted a little bit, whereas it's less maybe project management and more oversight. And so it's more kind of dealing with all these individuals, dealing with the architect and engineer, which you brought up, dealing with the contract of the OPM, um, whether it's public safety officials or otherwise, and then you know the town administrator's office as well. Maybe you could, and I'll just ask this of all the candidates, but maybe you could des describe a bit, <coughs> excuse me, um, how you see that, that shift taking place and what the role of the PBC might be moving forward like with this high school project. Well, one of the issues is this was pushed by a bunch of contractors back in the early 2000s to get into the OPMs. And what they did is the state is now mandating anything over $5 million, you must have an OPM. This building committee that I'm on for the Bird School, that's a whole separate thing. Mm -hmm. When you get money from the SBA, you have these 12 members of different entities. That's separate. Building committee, so you get anything less than $5 million, you don't have to hire an OPM. You don't have to hire a CPM. Typically, it's the standard rip and reads. You put the job out, yeah. and then you end up on it the whole time. So... As far as the OPMs, the OPMs do help. I'll give you that. Um, on, but when you get major projects, but I think sometimes the money is being wasted on smaller, simpler projects. Okay. Thanks. I'm all set. Thanks. All right. I just say, Jack, thanks for all your volunteer time on all these building projects over the years. Okay. All right. Thank you. you. Set? Um, next, we will have um, Jack Fisher. Would you like to come forward? <laughs> Evening. Uh, most of you know me. Um, uh, I'm an RTM. I've been on the Board of Assessors for literally decades. I've been on the Permanent Building Committee for nine years. Uh, professionally, I have over 30 years of experience as a senior engineer, engineering manager, program manager for a major defense contractor. And I've done programs all over the world, foreign countries and both domestically. Um, <clears throat> over the last 10 to 15 years, I've been doing uh, acting as a technical specialist on large uh, government proposals. And so I've been keeping my hand in, in these kinds of activities. Uh, I've, as I said, I've been on the Permanent Building Committee for nine years. Uh, I'm up for reappointment. Uh, I, as, as, as Jack said, over that last period of nine years, we've did the, done the police, the fire, the <coughs> council on aging, the uh, DPW garage, and they all came in on budget, or under budget, and under uh, on schedule, which is a major accomplishment in this this day and age. Um, I've been working w on the Bird Middle School project. I'm the representative at the weekly OAC meetings. I think I participate successfully in that. Uh, we're on track right now. 
uh, to both be under schedule and beyond schedule and under budget and I think that's a significant accomplishment and I'd like to think that I have had something to do with that as well as the rest of the permanent building committee and the members that are that are on the uh, school building advisor committee I'd like to continue to work and help the town proceed on the, the projects that are ahead of us so if you have any questions at all I'll be happy to answer them all right thank you so much Ben did you have the same question yeah it's just the same question I guess you kind of spoke to it a little bit there Jack we got the, the hint from the previous question um, I think it's just more about um, you know communication and and collaboration at this point um, is what the the permanent building committee is really what's most needed and the ability to work with the town administrator the ability to work with other entities and folks and and oversee it I mean that element of oversight that Jack was talking about is still very much there right it's very much needed particularly on the smaller projects um, so just your kind of I guess your view on how that fits in it, the OPM in, is the is is this is the superintendent for the town professionally that's what their role is the permanent building committee oversees them provides guidance to them they certainly listen to us and uh, I think that's a very important thing because what we do is we bring a viewpoint that is not a sometimes not a necessarily a construction viewpoint but what's the features what's the functionality of that building okay we can ask the school committee we can ask the school people what is that really for do you really need that and the answer is usually yes and we but we 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 probe and I think that's important it has to be done pr properly it has to be done politely and respectfully but we do it thanks thank you I, I would just say the same thing thanks for all your volunteer time over the years on various you know boards and committees my pleasure all right thank you thank you Jack and uh, the last member coming forward is um, Joseph Mulligan Joe Mulligan um, if you wouldn't mind coming up first of all thank you for considering my application um, the reasons for my uh, seeking this position uh, are first of all to give back to the community to give back to Walpole uh, secondly I'd look forward to working with the other committee members uh, in order to achieve the committee's goals my background I've recently retired from a f uh, 44 I believe year career in mortgage banking uh, most recently I worked as a credit manager at the Federal Home Loan Bank of Boston for the past 24 years my responsibilities included oversight of 250 uh, banks and credit unions uh, for credit reviews um, and I also reviewed the, uh, the low mortgages that they sold to the Federal Home Loan Bank this included collaboration with these lenders and their management to make their experience as smooth as possible I also worked with other departments within the Federal Home Loan Bank to achieve these goals in addition to serving on numerous committees within the bank so that's a, an overview of my uh, of my background uh, thank you very much any questions and you want to be sure. able to kind of yeah, the same so, question yeah so you uh, you kind of jumped on that as well I guess from the other questions Joe but it, um, in in terms of um, the collaboration and communication that we've been talking about what do you see as your experience in helping that you know um, in this particular instance you know with the PBC well what I'd, um, obviously my uh, my experience is um, is uh, not as um, not as in-depth as the other two candidates however I have had a great deal of experience in um, in working on committees and in somewhat sometimes adversarial situations with uh, with our lenders so I think I'd bring a, a good set of skills to reviewing the um, to reviewing the issues and uh, and bring them out to a favorable uh, resolution okay thank you Thanks, Joe. I know you've, you know, uh, volunteered your time on some other boards as well. So, thanks. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. We are very fortunate to have three um, individuals come forward to this for this position. I think as we talk about the permanent building committee, um, Ben has kind of began that discussion of how that committee has evolved and how the projects have evolved in what we are bringing to the table. Um, part of that what we're really seeking is the collaboration of the board and the communication skills within the board to work together we do have our you know hopefully next project 
you know, coming in the next year or so, um, if we move forward with that. Does anyone else have any other comments that they would like to add? Okay. Um, Make a then, motion. Yeah, I think you could go forward right. and make a motion. Uh, I'd make a motion to appoint uh, John Fisher and Joseph Mulligan to the Permanent Building Committee. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We have a vote, 500. Thank you, everyone, for um, coming forward. Thanks, guys. Great. We have a few other um, openings for committees. Yes, Jack. Okay, I'm not going to complain. I know what it's about. It was faded complete when I came here. Okay. Um, I guess whatever you do for the town, you save them money, you turn it back. It doesn't matter. It you you, you want people, your friends. But my question, from a technical viewpoint, where does that leave me with the bird school? I don't think there's any changes. Yeah, I don't think there's any change to that. Well, I'm on as a member of the Permanent Building Committee. I'm no longer a member of the Permanent Building Committee. Yep. So... You can certainly check with the state because that is a state requirement as to who's on that committee. So um, I'll check and yeah. let you know, Jack, and let the board know. Sure. I, I guess when you turn things in on time, on budget, under budget... Okay, thank you. 36 years. Awesome. Thanks, Jack. I'm going to make the other motion on there, There's two what, more, right? There's two more. Yeah. Well, what I was thinking of is, um, do we have any other members of the audience who are seeking reappointment that would like to come forward? I don't think so. All right. So I would make a motion to renew the terms of the board and committee members seeking reappointment as listed on the agenda. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We have a vote, five zero zero. <laughs> Thank you for members of our, our, of our community that are being reappointed and continue to serve on these boards. We are very fortunate to have so many volunteers. Um, okay. The next item on the agenda, that takes care of the Forest Committee as well. One more, I think. One yeah. more. Yeah, okay, we're doing um, one more. Yeah, they're looking to increase their associate members. Okay, do we have anyone here from the Forest Committee? This evening, I don't believe so. No. Okay. Can I'd make forward with that. I'd make a motion to approve the request to the Town Forest Committee to increase the number of associate members to four. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We have a vote five zero zero. All right. We have Chief Kelleher here to speak this evening on our Police Chief Quarterly Report. Good evening. Oh, good evening. Thank you for having me here tonight. Um, <clears throat> so we were last year in uh, early December, and since then we've had quite a bit going on, so I'll run through, per usual, the, uh, the stuff we've had going on. So uh, January 9th, we had uh, several car breaks, uh, Wilmington uh, up in 109. Two vehicles were broken into by way of a uh, smashed window using a frozen water bottle. Uh, credit cards were stolen under the small items from the cars. Um, similar incidents were reported, were reported all in the same time span in Foxborough and Sharon. Um, and we collaborated with those, those other departments to get some information together and identify a suspect vehicle. Uh, that vehicle was later uh, recovered during a pursuit in uh, New Hampshire in which we were able to recover uh, some of the victim's stolen property. So uh, fortunate there that it happened on the same day. Uh, we had an attempted B&E uh, to the vape shop, uh, Vape City, uh, on Main Street by the CVS. Uh, we had multiple teenage suspects uh, enter the Vape City uh, in the early morning hours, um, at like 6.30 in the morning, it was kind of brazen. Uh, video was recovered uh, from the area, uh, revealed the suspect vehicle that was a white SUV. Um, it was also identified in other uh, area related incidents, uh, one in Norwood about 20 minutes later, and then one down in Rhode Island shortly after that. Uh, the investigation revealed that a uh, juvenile suspect uh, from Chelsea was involved, and they were taken into custody by our detectives as well as Norwood PD. And during the execution of a search warrant on that resident, uh, uh, the, the clothing was recovered that was in, used in that crime, so we were able to tie them in. Um, this was part of a widespread. Um, spree of, 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 of breaks happening all over the state. So it was kind of significant that we were able to locate a couple of these individuals and uh, unfortunately it didn't slow them down, but we're, uh, we're, we're happy that we were able to, to, to solve our own anyways. Uh, January 29th, we had a significant drug arrest on Main Street. 
uh, after a lengthy investigation by our detectives into the, tra uh, the uh, flow of narcotics into the Walpole and the surrounding communities. Uh, as a result, a suspect from Rhode Island was arrested uh, for trafficking um, in fentanyl and in heroin. They had over 10 grams of fentanyl, over 36 grams of heroin. Uh, so that was a significant arrest along with some cash. So um, another um, significant drug arrest by our detectives. Uh, at the end of January into early February, we had a, um, a pretty sad story. A, a, a elderly resident had reported that they were st had almost $700,000 stolen from them over a period of like almost 10 years. Uh, it was stolen by a, uh, a housemate who was had befriended this person and was acting as a um, someone that would manage their finances for them. Um, and as a result, this individual was stealing from this person for a very long time to almost uh, clean this individual out. Um, Officers Michelle O'Neill and Heather Vaness did a tremendous job on this initially um, to get the ball rolling and then they stuck with the victim to offer a lot of services and help that person get in touch with the COA and some other uh, town related um, services to help them because they're going to need it going forward. Uh, the detectives continued the investigation along with the white collar crime section of the DA's office. Um, so their DAs are involved and it's going to be presented to the grand jury in the very near future um, with hopes of getting into Superior Court which has a heavier um, you know, penalties. Uh, once if this person is convicted of the crime so sad story but we hope we can do the best to help that person out uh, March 4th we had uh, an individual who was working at the 7-eleven uh, on Main Street steal almost hundred fifty thousand dollars with the scratch tickets um, right from the store um, they obviously have reporting requirements with the lottery and when they came up short they figured out they were missing quite a bit of money so our detectives again did a pretty good job um, identifying this individual and placing them in custody for that larceny and um, Again, local business kind of got taken for a ride there, but hopefully we can help them out and get them back on track. Uh, and finally, for our notable incidents, we had the fireworks disposal incident that happened in the end of January. And the reason why I mention this is um, we did catch a little bit of heat about how that message was relayed to the community about what was going on and what happened. And what I'll basically just explain real quickly is that we had kind of taken the advice of the state police bomb squad and used certain verbiage that they had experienced as being successful, which limited the amount of people that would come to the site where the detonation was occurring. We took that advice, put that out, and a lot of people were confused about exactly what we were doing and what was taking place. We clarified that with a Facebook post shortly thereafter, but at that point we had received some complaints to our dispatch area. So I kind of want to just clarify that in the future we've learned from this, we'll probably be a little more specific about what we're going to do and manage the scene uh, appropriately. I think in hindsight, having, the, having that call go out shortly before the detonation occurred would have prevented a crowd from showing up, and we probably should have used better language. But I just wanted to touch, about that, touch upon that publicly that we're probably going to do things differently next time as we go forward. Also, some complaints came, about, came out about that, that the smart, um, the 911, reverse 911 didn't go to everybody. So just uh, uh, kind of awareness that smart 911 is the system we're using. It's available on the town website to sign up and more information is on our Facebook page as well. So that way folks can get those calls if they like them. But um, I just wanted to touch upon that real quick because it did kind of uh, draw some criticism on our handling of that. Uh, in terms of stats, um, we had four, almost 5,000 calls for service um, in the first quarter with 39 arrests. Um, that's up from about 4,000 uh, in quarter four of 2023 um, and about 500 less than this time last year. I'm very happy to report that we have had no drug overdoses in this quarter whatsoever, um, nothing whatsoever. So we had six this time last year, so that's a, um, that's a good win. That number fluctuates, um, you know, for a variety of reasons, but I think our enforcement efforts and some of the drugs that we've seized has definitely had an effect on, on that number being low. Uh, in terms of Longview Farm, we had 44 calls of service this quarter. Um, that's uh, down from 49 we had this time last year. Um, I'm sorry, this time in uh, quarter four, 2023, and we're about the same at this time last year. Longview remains busy for us. Um, with kids coming in and out, it's very much the same things we're dealing with. We have certain kids that cause some problems. We work with the staff, we work with the director, we use our, our, our clinician to try to solve some of those problems. It remains uh, a place to generate some cost of service for us, but we're managing it um, as we go through. Mental health related calls, we had 185 uh, calls this quarter um, and about 171 in the quarter four of 2023. We had almost 700 calls last year for mental health related uh, issues in total in 2023. So that's up for a little bit from the, the 600 numbers we were seeing in past years. But again, having Dillman on board has been a tremendous help in managing those situations um, as they come up. But it's still going to be a major uh, issue for us to deal with. In terms of personnel, uh, very recently we had Officer Bieberman resign from his position after 10 years of service, um, and he is um, just changing careers. So he has moved on to something else, and we will work through replacing him. Dispatcher Dave Sullivan also left to uh, take a public safety job with Emerson College. Uh, we posted that position, and we have located a um, experienced dispatcher from a neighboring community that will begin in early April, so that's about what we filled. 
Uh, in terms of community policing, um, Alice drills and training have been completed at all the schools by the SRO and the team of officers that specialize in that type of training. Uh, we appreciate the cooperation on the schools from the schools on this. That's a, a big deal to get that done uh, every school year, and we'll keep doing that uh, at the beginning of the year and training all the new staff and um, make sure the kids are up to date on the protocols. Uh, the patrol officers and the dispatch union have also designed more specialty patches to commemorate the 300th anniversary. Those are, um, again, on sale, like, like a lot of other things that they generate, and that all goes into a fund that they use to help bolster our community policing efforts. So we appreciate them and their hard work on that. Uh, we completed a four-week RAD class that was in December. Uh, we run those quite frequently, so that one was completed in December. And finally, we had our annual uh, holiday-related um, uh, benefits to benefit people in need the Santa cop and giving tree again our dispatchers spearhead that and uh, did a tremendous job we helped a lot of people this year so grateful for them for their efforts uh, finally on the training uh, front we had officers uh, everybody completed their CPI first responder training we were required to do that and the space to do that is limited to the MPTC so we're fortunate we have a, a cadre of officers that are trained to train all of our own officers so we bang that out in a month get that finished so everybody's up to date and certified uh, we did firearms last quarter so that's all done for the year and again we did all that in-house so we're very happy about that um, and again we had more of our instructors get recertified so we keep those folks up to date ready to go to help us um, um, keep these things in house so with that um, that's all I have in my report so any questions I'd be more than happy to take all right thank you it's always a very active um, quarter um, really pleased to hear that there was no drug overdoses Me too. I know that fluctuates but um, hopefully we can kind of stay with that and uh, mental health you know calls that's definitely a concern um, we continue to be grateful that we have our clinician on board and, and utilizing that and have that having a key role um, with the Wapple Police Department. So I'm going to open it up to the board. Ben? Um, just one comment, and you had talked about it, um, Rich, about the, uh, well, now I'm going to screw it up. Is it Smart not <laughs> Swift? Uh, it's Smart 911. I'm going to look at 9 -1 -1 the, I have the pamphlet in front of me, so um, I messed this up. Yeah, yeah Smart 911. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The majority of people that I heard from over on the Lincoln Road area were just, they weren't signed up for it, and they didn't know about it. So I don't know yeah. what else we can do to make people aware of it other than Facebook posts or, like, stickers at Walpole Day or whatever. But I would say, um, from what I heard, that was the main driver is people okay. weren't even signed up for it. Um, I did also notice that when the call came up on my phone, I th if I recall correctly, I think I do, it was a 508 number. It didn't say like, I don't know, emergency call or whatever, right? Totally right? Good, yeah, so it's like, oh, I don't know who this yeah. is, I'm not gonna answer it. So that's that's tough too. I wonder if there's something that could be done about the caller ID portion yeah. of that. That would that would help because a lot of times you do get a lot of calls, you just don't want to answer if you think it's spam, right. so that makes sense. Right, yeah, it, that's beyond all our remit. But um, right. yeah, anything we can do as well to help out to spread the word on, um, this signing up for that service I think is helpful so. yeah and the sound carried a lot further than I would have expected it to so it's funny because it went definitely towards the North Walpole Westwood Medfield side we get calls from Medfield too yep. but there were folks that were on the other side like Cedar Street never even heard it <laughs> it was strange how that worked I don't know it's how they set it up but yeah it, it, it was loud I think um, we'll go down the line. Glenn, did you have a comment? Oh, too? yeah, just a quick okay. comment. I'm going to bounce around a little bit, but just obviously I was pleased you and I have talked about the opioid overdose um, issue and, and my concern about that. So obviously good news there, but never want to get complacent because you never know what's going to happen yeah. in the next quarter. So just keep, keep on keeping on. I, I did want to ask uh, about the opioid settlement funds. You may have heard that we the town has access to. I think it's close to three hundred thousand dollars. I'm sure the health department is interested in, and has an interest in how that will be spent. Um, town administrator probably has some ideas, but this, you know, obviously you should be involved in that conversation too. Of course, yeah. Um, and so yeah, yeah, we work closely with Melissa and the health department. The the, the uh, coalition, drug alcohol coalition, has been we're very much involved in that, and we're trying to get a grant um, to fund a, a more. Uh, I was a professional, but more permanent, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, coalition with some staffed people. So uh, getting the word out to, to reduce youth um, mm -hmm. substance use and all that other, th all those things. So yes, yes, I mean, it's one, it's, in that. it's one time money, but there's a fair amount of it. Um, yep. So I'm sure if you get creative, absolutely, uh, that would be a good idea. Yeah. Jim. Thanks, Sally. Do we always use Lincoln Road for the um, when we detonate devices like that? No. Um, honestly, this is the first time I've had to deal with something like that. Um, and as I was making my way back into work, there was conversations with the commanders from the, not the commanders, but the supervisors that were on scene from the, the bomb squad. And they were looking for a larger area um, that didn't have a lot of people around it. And it seemed like that would be the area to go. Um, okay. They don't like to take them out of the community. 
and yeah. kind of do it somewhere else. I yeah. mean, uh, um, so yeah, I, I, that was what was determined at that point in time. Um, it's but it's not the designated site, no. So is, is that the first time we did that up there? To my knowledge, yeah. yes, Jim. You, Paul can answer this, but uh, that night we were kind of scrambling around. It's my understanding this has only happened one other time, at least while well, Paul's been here as a firefighter for some time. And we, the other time we detonated it up there. So that's okay. why we all okay. said it was dark out. Yeah. Let's look to see where it works. And that, that site jumped out to, right. kept coming back to that one. The reason I'm asking is that obviously we, we can't be sure which direction. I bet a lot has to do with the way the wind's blowing. Right. You know, in terms of how the sound goes. So that could be different on any given night. So when I think about the Smart 911, the effort there is to notify the people that are in the general vicinity, right? So that, that night we put that out town wide. You did, okay. Yes. So how is it that some people didn't get it then if you put it out town wide? Again, it could be a, I, there could be some technolog technological things that I just couldn't quite answer. Um, maybe it wasn't the fact that the people, folks weren't signed up for it. Um, but I'm, I'm not, yeah. I, I don't recall signing up for it, and I, and I still get it. You still got it, okay. Yeah. Do you get it on your cell phone, Jim? No. So I'm wondering oh. if that's part of it too. That might that, be. That's, no, that's more people have gotten rid of no, their that's actually, That is definitely an issue. I feel okay. like we've talked about this before, maybe it was a couple of years ago. It will go out to landlines, yeah. but for people who don't have landlines, oh. just you sell, you have to go and actually sign okay. up for it. Yeah, that, that does, yes, okay. Right. You have to go on the website okay. and do it. All right, that's helpful, that Ben, sense. thanks. Yeah. I was trying to figure out why that would be. Yeah. yeah. And, and then my only other comment would be, since it did carry to Medfield and Westwood and other places, Maybe one of our procedural things we should consider is that when we're going to do something like this, again, it's few and far between apparently, but if we do another one of these, is to think about the neighboring towns too, so they can do their own of course. reverse 911. So we, we did communicate with the area towns. Um, I, I, I don't know if we communicated with Westwood, <coughs> but we did communicate with Medfield and Norfolk because they were on that side. Um, but then we got a call from Sharon saying they heard it too. So really? we just didn't anticipate the, how far it would really go, I believe, and that's. You know, again, and it was happening quickly too. It was kind of a moving thing. We were yeah. trying to get the, this thing, off, yeah. you know, squared away before it got too late. And yes, yeah, so that's definitely concerns about going forward. Is definitely pushing that. Yeah, and out. I'm not being critical. I think you guys handled it really well. Yeah, I, I agree. Those are I things that we trying to be responsive to some of the things that we're hearing. Of course, if I could just chime in. We do have all this information up on our website, and it specifically says we'll try to contract you through uh, it says the, the information listed on your home or business. You have to go in and register your cell phone. Might be a good idea for us to put something in the Walpole Hometown Weekly uh, that maybe reminds people. You know, you've put. You know, you have the police report in there now, which I think is great. By the yeah. way, yeah, you can put an addendum on there that says, and by the way, you know, it, it, we have this capability available, but cell phones aren't included. Right. You know, sign up for it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, again, we can utilize our own social media as well. Yeah. So we have a, yeah. a wide reach on that. So I think yeah. we're doing both. That might help. But but don't mis misunderstand. I think you guys handled it beautifully. Oh, so, yeah. completely understand it. Just this, some of the stuff that we were you know working through that time, and, and there were some things we definitely, which is why I wanted to bring it up because we did right. see some feedback. There's stuff we could have done better, and you know we'll do that going forward. But I, right. I, I appreciate it. Thanks, Jim. And I think it needs to be kind of scheduled annual, you know, twice a year a message, yeah. so that it's not just now, but twice a year automatically as part of your kind of um, social media push that. And continue to put that out. It's like changing the batteries, batteries in your fire alarm. I was just <laughs> not going to say things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah, we could even we could even put it in like the the property tax bills or the water bills or something like that. Oh, that's a good idea. You know, we're sending it out anyway. Just a little note that says, by the way, mm -hmm. yeah. no problem. Yeah. Sure. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Right. Can you I? One more? Yeah. So I, I know over the last five years, mental health calls have been on an increase, and I think you mentioned call volume is up again this quarter. Is there any other trend that you're seeing with those calls or is it just more calls spread across all the normal categories? Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's been a lot of, um, it, it, I mean, it, uh, the mental health has been a big factor in that. Um, you know, we've been dealing with a quite a bit of that. We have a lot of repeat callers <laughs> um, and that does tie into the mental health side of that. Um, we have several folks in town that like to just repeatedly call us and that's where we try to get Dylan involved and, and mitigate that so that's definitely some of it you know we, we've had just other other things you know shoppings at Walmart um, regular calls for service where people just more people out and about now it's generally just more a little bit more going on we haven't seen any significant like crime trends in terms of like things that have happened that we're trying to get ahead of but it's just generally more stuff going on but the mental health is a big driver in that I believe yeah okay thanks sure 
All right. We also have um, two other items to discuss. We'll move on to the um, heavy. Thank you for the update. And move on to the Welcome. heavy commercial vehicle exclusion. Fine Street. Yeah, fine, sure. Yeah, did, uh, I don't know how much you want me to go back into this uh, and present it, or I just don't know how you want to proceed with this because uh, we did. I don't know if there's any other members of the board have any questions concerning this. So this was brought forward to us um, quite a few months ago. Yeah. Uh, I think many of us, I think Jim O'Neill, you mentioned driving down that road and, and a truck coming at you and it just finding to be impossible. So right. unless any of the members this of the This is a request from us that they're approving, essentially. Right? Yeah, so yeah. 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 the mass starts requiring this. Yeah. So it wasn't included in the traffic rules and regs. I think that's the purpose of uh, oh, bringing it back before you again. So okay. obviously we're very much in favor of this. We, you know, Carl did a lot of work with the, his counterpart and Sharon, um, and the roadway needed it. So um, we were supportive of it. It works going to be worked out well on our end, and um, mm -hmm. I think we just need to get it in the regs so we can we can deal with it officially. All right. <coughs> Then do you want to move forward with a motion on this? I would make a motion to incorporate a heavy truck exclusion for Pine Street into the traffic rules and orders. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We have a vote, 5-0-0. Zero, zero. Um, and then the next item um, is just uh, appointment for uh, Deputy Chief Kilroy as a constable. Yes, aye. so... Uh, uh, Lieutenant saying we, we, we've always had two constables to sign town warrants, another legal process that um, that needs to be served and, and, and posted uh, to be in accordance with the law. So Lieutenant Zangetti was filling in that while we were transitioning um, from myself into uh, different roles. So um, his term is now up, so it only makes sense to have the deputy chief step into that role now. So again, this is to uh, formally have that happen. Great. Any questions or comments from the board on this? Okay. Ben? I'd make a motion to appoint Deputy Chief Kilroy as a constable. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We have a motion, five zero zero. All right. Thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Next item on the agenda, we have um, Chief <coughs> Fire Chief Barry with a uh, quarterly update as well for our fire department. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for having us here this evening. Uh, so, Chief Keller, the last time we we're here was December fourth. Uh, to date, we have uh, had. Uh, 1,573 calls for service. Um, of those, 979 have been emergency responses and a little under 600 have been uh, inspections. So we're uh, still busy, busier, on, busier than last year, and which was busier than the year before. So we continue to uh, continue to see the results of growth in this town that been, we've been constantly being experiencing for a while. Um, incidents, we had a few, uh, few fires in town since the last time we were here, uh, some single family homes, and we also had uh, we also had one in a large multifamily uh, unit in downtown, which was contained by a sprinkler system until the uh, arriving units were able to uh, mitigate the rest of the situation. But a um, few displaced residents from that incident, from the, uh, from the original fire, but also from the sprinkler, the water damage, which, which did its job, but uh, it helped contain the incident until we were able to arrive and uh, mitigate the rest, shut the water down as soon as possible. And, um, allow everybody else to get back into the units as, as quick as possible. Um, we've gone mutual aid multiple times this, uh, this past few months as well to uh, Plainville a couple of times, just recently as yesterday for a second alarm of fire in Norwood a couple of times, Mansfield, uh, Fox Row as well. Um, each time we receive, uh, our firefighters receive um, comments and support and uh, recognition from, from the communities that respond to from their fire chiefs and supporting and recognize the action of the firefighters. It's, uh, they represent us very well and we're very, uh, very proud of them and appreciative of the support that they uh, show our mutual aid communities. We will also uh, continue and will continue to do for a while, um, provide mutual aid and receive mutual aid in the ambulance response. Uh, just, just, um, just nonstop, the ambulance running everywhere. We also have a few uh, unique incidents going back to uh, December 18. We had 63 responses on that day alone. Uh, that was the weather-related uh, incident with um, uh, just a, a very draining and, and um, long-duration day with multiple, multiple responses. Uh, fantastic cooperation starting with dispatch and um, the police department, the DPW was great. We even had the town administrator, I mean, somebody in a black pickup truck driving around helping us out as well. <laughs> and um, building and wire department were fantastic uh, working with. It was uh, just calls just calls backed up one after another and just a uh, great great logistical job by dispatch getting us uh, to each call as we could um, let's see um, 
Chief Kelleher touched on the uh, touched on it a moment ago, but uh, the other unique incident was the um, we had some improvised explosive devices dropped off at our fire station, which. Um, if I can get a word out to anybody, if you come across any device like that, if you have something, please do not bring it to us. Make the phone call. We'll come. We'll bring everybody there. Um, the potential to shut down a whole public safety building by bringing product like that to, to the station. So um, we, we worked in conjunction with the police department, with, um, with the state police uh, um, bomb squad assigned through the fire marshal's office. And... Um, Worked well. There was some learning, learning tools with that. We have used that site before. It's been uh, early, early 2000s when um, we had to detonate some equipment as well. But uh, the issue with those, the, the the most recent issue was again, it was homemade improvised devices, which um, the, the troopers were unaware of you know, how large they were, how how much uh, product was in them. So it was definitely a louder um, explosion than I think was anticipated, but. Uh, uh, by us, but they, they said it was um, uh, that's the process that they wanted to do. We wanted to keep it on a public site, not a private owned pro people property, and we really didn't want to take it out of out of our community as well. It's, it was our issue, and it's um, uh, communication will try to be better next time. Thank you. Uh, and it was great, uh, great co cooperation with the um, Department of Fire Services with another incident that we had with a uh, chemical spill in one of the classrooms at the uh, regional high school that I mentioned a little while to you guys um, again the uh, we had a tier one incident uh, tier one hazmat response to that which was a small uh, um, small group of hazmat technicians assigned to the S Department of Fire Service state agency and they uh, they worked well with us we worked well with them and um, it was a great uh, again a great team effort mitigate the incident uh, remove the hazard and uh, allow the students to go back to school, get back, occupy those classrooms as quick as possible. On our uh, personnel note, we had uh, one retirement, uh, a long-term individual that was been out. Uh, he's been with us for about 20 years, firefighter Kyle Hoff, retired um, earlier this year. And uh, we wish him well and uh, happy retirement. We've had two resignations. One, uh, one was back on January 31st. Uh, firefighter Fahey left to go to another department. and. Uh, Firefighter Kevin Brady, uh, resignation is effective uh, uh, April 1st. So uh, we wish, uh, wish all of them the best of the luck in their future endeavors. Probationary firefighters Feely and Ganya have uh, completed their orientation were assigned to Group 1 and Group 3, respectively. Firefighter Campo, Campo Basso graduated uh, the academy from on February 2nd, and he's been assigned to Group 3 as well. Firefighter Larry graduated February 22nd. He's been assigned to Group 1, both of those guys, after they completed their in-house orientation with us. And um, our, our experienced firefighters have done a great job in, in mentoring them and bringing them up and bringing them up to how Walpole does. The Academy does a great way of telling you this is the generic way to do it, but each community does it uh, stuff a little differently. But it's, um, it's great to have our guys uh, step up, take a lead, and, and share their knowledge, um, the knowledge that we have. Um, we have 50 percent of the department with less than f five years or less of experience. So we have a, a young, a young department that's that's growing up together and is going to mentor one another as they as they move along. And um, I think the the fire department is a is a, a great a great place to be. And it's uh, we're only going to get better with uh, the time they bond together and, and learn together and uh, come to know the town together and represent the town. So uh, we have two graduating this this Friday from the uh, State Fire Academy in Stowe, and they'll do their orientation as well and then be assigned to uh, groups. Um, since we last met, uh, Captain Stacy and Lieutenant, Tom and Lieutenant Armstrong have been promoted to Group 3 as well, and they're, um, they're settling into their respective roles as well and appreciate the, uh, the jobs that they've undertaken and uh, the, um, the mentorship that they're passing on to, to our members as well. Without all those moves, throughout all those moves, we've had multiple firefighters that have had to move to different groups, different stations, uh, back and forth. Um, and it's, uh, I'd like to express my gratitude for the professionalism that they've all handled that. Uh, going from group to group completely disrupts your schedule, uh, your lifestyle. Your, your, it's, it's, a, um, it's, it's a hindrance, but it's in the best of the department, and uh, they've all handled professionally, and I've, I've uh, appreciated the uh, professional that, that they've, they've handled that, those situations. So um, we have two more to bring before you, hopefully you're by your next meeting, and that should get us to um, full strength. And uh, we'll, um, that's allotted, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll touch deeper on that in a moment. But uh, apparatus, uh, 
I know I keep telling you, but uh, this, the second ambulance that we purchased uh, a while ago, is, is, I was told, is, in, is at the manufacturer. It's at the dealer right now and should be delivered to us this week. So um, Firefighter Miranda, Lieutenant Abramovitz, and Firefighter Gavin will get that in service to as soon as possible, and we can get that uh, out on the road. The, um, we'll, we'll trade in the 2017 ambulance and our current ambulance, too, coming out of Station, uh, station 2, with the 120,000 miles on it will be designated as, as our spare ambulance. So that's, um, those mileages have just grown up uh, tremendously from, from what we had been experienced uh, years past. So um, looking forward to get that new ambulance in service. Uh, the budget, we seem to be doing okay. Uh, my first year into it, uh, overtime is, is strained and uh, we are keeping an eye on it. Um, with, uh, all unnecessary overtime has, has been denied and um, basically shift coverage and any EMS training or required required training is uh, is all that's permitted keeping uh, the town administrator updated on that and work closely with him as, as we need the um, I'm pleased to report on our grants uh, our state grant that is is uh, assistant chief Sh Shirella applied for executive office of public safety and security uh, equipment grant and was uh, fortunate enough to receive an award of $19,000. It allowed us to um, purchase uh, EMS turnout gear, and, uh, firefighting gloves, and, and flashlights, which um, is all a non matching grant. So that's uh, great. Allows us to um, minimize the wearing of our structural turnout gear into residents' homes uh, on our bodies. And uh, um, they're a high vis of high visibility that order just went out so we hope to be getting those uh, relatively soon we were denied our federal fiscal year 2022 safer uh, application as well as our fire prevention application um, no reason for denial other than um, millions of dollars were requested for the safer and, and even less millions were available so we're um, we're optimistic that uh, we're applying again right now. We're going to ask again for four, if, uh, with your permission. Uh, I've spoken to the town administrator, and that seems to be the number to go for. That'll um, the goal for that would be to get us to uh, closer to our our obtained goal of 13 per group. That would um, that would put us uh, if we were successful with that. That would put us with three groups at 12 and one group of 13. So it's uh, the um, it's a long-range goal, but that that's uh, that would just provide us a, um, a better better run department, safer department, and um, like I said, our as I've said m multiple times, uh, our immediate goal. So, thank you. Uh, fire prevention. Deputy Hover is is again extremely busy. Is um, multiple projects going through, and, and we know there's more just knocking on the door, waiting to start. And he's uh, handling the site the site review, all the way from site review to uh, final sign off for occupancy so he's, he's doing a great job and um, updating our computer systems or trying to update our computer system bring us uh, a little more um, a, a little more modern and trying to get more stuff online more permitting process online through the town's viewpoint uh, with the building department so uh, we look forward to seeing that coming through training multiple uh, multiple members committed to continue to take uh, advantage of the academy classes that are offered and um, we, we continue to work uh, um, on duty training as, as our call volume permits but as I mentioned earlier our, our calls for service continue to go higher and higher each year so um, it's it's uh, it's difficult but they're doing a great job especially with like I said all the newer people coming through with the orientation and um, it's it's uh, it's difficult and it can be time consuming but it's, uh, it can be rewarding at the same time and appreciative of the work that they're going through we uh, Friday before St. Patrick's Day, right before the parade, we hosted our, um, we again hosted our senior breakfast at the COA, and it was a fantastic turnout by, um, by, as uh, it was a sold out crowd with a waiting list that uh, we couldn't, we couldn't supply. So, uh, but again, I appreciate everybody that showed up. It was, uh, it was staffed by volunteer firefighters, uh, firefighters, firefighters that volunteered their time, as well as friends, uh, friends of our fire department that. Uh, we're extremely appreciative again it's, it's a core group of people that'll come on in and uh, just drop everything to do and run a run a tight ship and provide a, a great breakfast for um, for our, our community um, smoke and COs we uh, we just had a um, just had a time change and uh, same thing touching to change a clock change a battery it's my reminder to um, 
if your batter if your smoke detector is over 10 years old it needs to be changed out and uh, the CO detectors are a little different it's read your um, carbon monoxide detectors are a little different. read your manufacturers recommendations but uh, that it's um, they're about six or eight years is what they're averaged out so take a look at that if uh, change a clock change a battery and uh, with that thank you very much I can answer any questions if you may have Thank you, Chief. Certainly was a busy quarter. Thank <laughs> um, you. Glenn, did you? Yeah, uh, Chief, thanks for that. That was packed with lots of good information and a lot of it, very good news. Your management of personnel seems like it's spot on. Um, we like the fact that you're heading toward being at full strength, even though you got some vaccinations just recently and coming up. Um, so good job with that. That's really important. Um, it also helps with your overtime budget when you keep that full strength. And uh, it's, all, it's all very positive. So your ability to respond to critical incidents um, Oh, very good. So thank you for that. I did have a quick question, and then this is probably my only question. Just on the apartment complex fire, um, what, what floor was, was that on? Do you know? Do you remember? It was a higher floor. I'm sorry, I don't was, have the... Uh, I'm only asking. I figured it might be a, a higher floor, because I think that's one of the reasons why we have the tower truck, um, is for buildings. You know, we have Siemens, but we also have these apartment buildings and, and, and more coming. Um, did you have the tower respond? To, I don't know if you needed to, but did you have the tower respond to that? We did have the tower respond. It, um, it was not needed. As I said the fire was contained mm -hmm. to the unit, and um, it was it was available. Everybody, most people, self evacuated, yeah. and um, it, uh, it was minimal water damage by us. Minimal personal. It was just moving people, getting the smoke out of the building. Those are all compartmentalized. And it's difficult to move the smoke out of those uh, once it makes it way into the hallway. So it's um, it was it was a labor intensive opportunity getting into uh, shutting the sprinkler system down it's a large system before it all drains out so it's um, it was uh, again labor intensive uh, labor intensive process but uh, we do not need to put the uh, the aerial up in the up yeah. to evacuate anybody else but it's uh, not just the height but it's also helpful for the reach we have a lot of driveways that are set back sure. so it's um, it, it, it helps us to work a, l a little more safely off the up on a roof to if we had to vent a hole or a chimney fire which we've had used in the past so it's uh it's a it's it's a definite tool um it's it is staffed by recall personnel right yeah that's now. why i ask i know it's a little more challenging to mobilize and so did you i'm sorry to interrupt did you have any a chance to sort of experience any of those challenges or did it go smoothly as you would have hoped and, and you had personnel on hand pretty quickly we did have personnel on hand quickly it was uh they did a great job um locating it containing it and uh tying into the um grabbing what we call a high-rise pack or brought we brought our hose upside yep. upstairs tied it into the stairwell and um uh, it was a younger crew and they did a great job uh very impressed with the uh the uh, wherewithal that they had and um to again to mitigate the situ situation as quickly as possible Great. um so we were lucky we had everybody in house at the same time so it was we weren't we didn't have both the ambulance stretched so we weren't too stretched then which which makes a, a huge difference great so um, yeah. thank you thank you for asking thanks for touching on that um, thanks for the update chief and just to um, piggyback a little on his so when we have tower recall does that mean that the um, firefighters meet at the scene or do they come to the no when we do a recall everybody here. comes back to the station, back to the station. and um, we will respond from the station with our apparatus with, with our gear. Okay. Um, so my, my questions, um, well, I mean, I guess one <laughs> was the safer grant is like almost a punchline at this point, really, uh, which is unfortunate. It's great money to have. I just wanted to reiterate how thankful we are for your diligence and, and Deputy Chief Shirella for just continuing to apply to these. I mean, it's something that we can really use, obviously. We need the staffing. Um, the fact that it's like this black box that we don't really get any feedback or find out anything at all is incredibly frustrating and I know you guys um, feel that but we really appreciate the diligence in going after that hopefully one of these times we can secure it and if we ever find anybody that has the secret to that then you know we'll bring them on board um, and the other question I had was just uh, about the overtime so you mentioned like December 18th which was that one big event like the windstorm or whatever whatever it was um, how much um, does that uh, pre present a challenge to overtime budgets versus like what Glenn call, uh, talked about and what you described is having to change shifts and kind of piece teams together. We know that that's a big challenge to overtime, but specifically these like one day events, a storm or 
a flood or whatever, does that take up? Like what portion of overtime would that take up or how, how is that kind of, if you could explain it in, in layperson terms. Sure, sure. Okay. So it, it, it's, so when we put a recall on, it, it, it would vary. We have, we have a tiered system with the recall. Yeah. So we try to gauge the, um, gauge the need type. So we will, at a minimum, we'll, we'll recall the uh, group coming on tomorrow. If, if we were to put a group recall right now, if we couldn't get anybody back from that, which at times can be difficult, uh, then we'll recall the group that just got off, so the group that worked yesterday. And then on a situation where if it's a structure fire, reported structure fire, we'll, uh, if we can't get anybody back on either one of those recalls, then we'll recall the whole department. Uh, and it can, it can vary. Um, numbers we can get one back to, to um, double digits back you know it depends on who's available kind of what time it is and how far people have made their way back to their homes uh, out of the area um, number wise we've just um, Mary we've just started breaking it down and really dying down to be able to be more accurate um, breakdown of, of where all those expenditure is going and how it is uh, how it is in being Devied up. Yeah. Uh, we still shift wise. We still when we are stronger, we're able to drop down um, a few firefighters, depending if um, our minimum staffing right now is nine, which is what the the board agreed to. Uh, so f when we have we were up for a little bit, so we're able to drop a couple. So that saved us on some overtime with that aspect. But as far as um, answer the question for a specific recall, it's uh, it's it's a three hour minimum for a firefighter is what the overtime is, is spelled yeah. out but so if we had like two of those incidents a year would that would that signal like a, a challenge to our overtime budget you know what i mean like if we had one of those you got to recall no, as many people as possible you got 70 calls in a day or whatever if we had uh just big picture if we had a few of those a big picture yes yeah, so yeah. it's, it's it's i think there's enough room in the budget we just had okay. um this year with the overtime we did have an awful lot of people uh awful lot of people leave that weren't unexpected when the uh, when the budget was was presented yeah so that um right off the bat and then we had promotions to uh the chief officers that kind of left us at a deficit on captain's positions um, yeah not, yeah not to bury the lead on it but it's, i'm thinking like we have this snow and ice budget and i don't i'm not saying that that function functions like your budget for overtime but we got to think about okay how many sto snowstorms are we getting we're getting less more or ice or whatever it is we need to respond to and that's been going down obviously we're getting no snow the past two winters but when you guys if you have these responses and i know that i've lost power at my house more in the last year than i have in the last you know 10. so if we're going to be responding to more of those incidents if that's something that we should be concerned about are there going to be more of these storms where we have full day responses and we're calling people and spending all this overtime we've we've, we've had a we've had a few of maybe those all-day responses we've maybe had uh, I can remember I can remember three yeah spread over a uh, multiple year yeah multiple it's, it's doesn't seem to be every year but it's uh, <coughs> it's it's throughout my career we've, we've had a handful of those days where it just seems call after call after call so it's it's uh, it's not an every year occurrence yeah. type of thing or even so it's it's okay thank you yeah, yeah. I I know Glenn started to mention it as well, but I, I appreciate your efforts to uh, keep new firefighters going through the system, you know, hiring them, getting them into the academy, and bringing them on board. I, I know you've got a couple coming up soon. I uh, really do appreciate that. You know, this will be the first time in a long time we're really, uh, knock on wood, um, up to full staffing, and, and that's a really good thing. So great work by uh, all of you to, to make that happen. So I know it's not easy to... Thank you very much. No, right firefighters people. are doing a great job uh, welcoming and, and you know, mentoring and uh, making it a, a welcoming environment. So we're um, we're excited and, uh, like you said, looking forward to the future. Great. Thanks. Jim. Back to the, the Safer Grant for a second, and I'm glad you're applying yet again. Uh, your persistence is admirable, and I know it's very frustrating. That's a federal grant. So have we considered reaching out to Congressman Lynch on this for help? We will. Um, I'm not sure if it's been done in the past. Uh, they're aware of it. It's just these um, since I think 2020. Uh, it's it's been a non-matching fund uh, for the for the safer grant. So it's um, the communities are searching for these 
much, much more. So, uh, again, billions and billions of dollars were applied for last year, and again, um, much less was available. So, multiple communities were, were, were shot down. It's uh, it can be frustrating. Is it very time consuming and uh, and detailed process that uh, Chief Sh Chief Shirell has undertaken now? So it's uh, yeah, we're, we're but we will reach out to them, and I think it's um. It, it's worthwhile. Uh, Massachusetts has a good reputation with uh, with the legislators, so we're um, looking forward to continuing that. And we have a good relationship with Congress and Lynch, and and so I, I think that'd be worthwhile doing. Uh, I'm also uh, thinking I don't know how many years safer grants have been available and how many years we applied for them. I assume all of them, um, and I'm wondering if it'd be helpful to recap for the congressman. You know what we've done year for X number of years, and you know not been successful, uh, and point out some things like the growing nature of the community and the stress on our overtime budget, and things like that. That you know uh, we really probably you know could, and I'm sure that uh, that the, the deputy is doing a great job on getting the. Uh, getting all that stuff factored in but I, I wonder if we make congressman lynch really acutely aware of where we are and what we're trying to accomplish if that might be helpful sure maybe not but it's i think it might be worth a shot definitely worthwhile okay thank you thanks and i'm happy to help out directly with that if you'd like thank you okay we'll be in touch okay yeah. just briefly touch upon uh, the a fire in the apartment building in the tower one I mean I think that was one of our largest concerns is a fire in one of those upper levels so um, congratulations to the fire department of a situation that you know I think is something that we've thought of when we had those you know tall tall buildings going downtown that it was hopefully best laid circumstances you know that we could handle um, and the calls continue to come in and we continue to feel the pressure of not having Nord Hospital right there um, and the wear and tear and on our ambulance. So I'm glad to hear that the next one is coming in. And thank you, you know, for continuing to apply to those grants. I think you hear from all select board members that we absolutely support a fully staffed fire department, um, even with these retirements and, and re you know, resignations. It's wonderful to hear that we have some new members coming up and two more. Um, hopefully ready to graduate and we look forward for them coming forward to our board as well thank you great okay thank you thank you. Barry. thank you everybody thank you it's a little bit past our time for open forum but um, I will call anyone here to speak on open forum this evening I think it's you buddy all right Good evening ladies and gentlemen my name is Kenneth Southwood, Precinct 5, 4 and upon the Street, South Walpole. I am here, I have been a, many of you know, 15 year member, volunteer for the Walpole Ponds Committee. I am not here to speak on their behalf, but I am here to represent, as many of you know, my concern for water. Um, recently, we've, uh, in the past couple of years, we've done a great job up at Turner's Pond, opening up the view, getting it cut back, the, um, reception from commuters and just people generally passing by has been absolutely overwhelming support um, when we got there 14 years ago it was literally a full trash barrel full of trash once a week from that parking lot today I can tell you it is less than a milk crate okay so we're gonna get some sand get some refreshed sand up there uh, hopefully short shortly and um, that's in good shape. What I would like to address is our pond across the street. Um, and if in this year of our 300th anniversary we can put some serious dedication into getting it dressed up. During our meeting with the Conservation Commission um, concerning Turner Pond, the board was very concerned the board made mention that this is our conservation area these are our conservation areas understandable our goal is to conserve nature conserve our water however walpole's foundation like our town seal has always been is water and we have in that the recreation that came with water our efforts at turner pond fishing families community be it winter now we've expanded it we've got it opened up 
and it's fishing and it is a year-round destination now for a lunch snack to read a book just to sit by the water this one over here that one's outside of town this one over here I worked with Mr. Maffey in the Trails Committee. We got a nice dock built over there. We got it cleaned up. We spent a million dollars. A lot of people put a lot of effort to drive that million dollar dredge commitment. Um, it's Memorial Pond because that is a Veterans Memorial Bridge. That is also in need of disrepair. We weren't able to get it accomplished with that dredge money. A little bit of that dredge money, maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars needed for ball fields. We have the Memorial Bridge. We have a massive influx of growth that's there now. It's been commented to me on several occasions that nobody can go out and stand on that bridge and fish anymore. We made it deeper and now nobody can use it. And it's not getting any prettier. So I'm here, I know I only have three minutes and I will do my best I can but I'm here to just say in our year 300th anniversary party be it through veterans outreach the ponds committee has shrank a lot our kids are grown they're teenagers now we all know where teenagers go they don't hang around with mom and dad anymore do they right we got to let them grow and let them go so our staff is pretty much tiny there's three of us trying to keep that going and also here um and to end it our town seal is water we have this absolute we know you know we go back to the blueprint to the design of this whole downtown park we have the maps of it and what it once was what it was the goal was for it to be and yet over here i don't like to bring out what other towns are doing but if we travel around there's grass to the edge of a pond most of them. I was recently in Bridgewater. They have a massive memorial park. Town River running through the town at 8 o'clock in the morning. There's a town worker walking to pick up trash. That's a massive park. We'll take care of Turner's Pond. I myself, and most likely on behalf of the Ponds Committee, can we get some serious dedication to cleaning up the memorial bridge? And if we can spare some funds, get the structure repaired because the spillway is in need of serious repair, as noted by Roger Turner when we did dredge it. Um, and just, can we get some dedication over there to get it cleaned up? That's it. Uh, can, I, can I jump in real quick? Uh, in, in very general terms. Um, if I'm community, yeah, family, department, at the state level, it's the Department of Conservation and Recreation. So can you know? Walpole is the land of water. Everybody that grew up here swam in almost every body of water here. And I'll end it with that. We can swim in that again because we spent a million dollars to dredge it to 11 feet. But let's just get people interested in going near it and get all that growth cleaned out so it's not collecting trash. So Kenny, let me, let me dive in. Let, let board member Glenn speak now. We, yeah. As you know, we're not really I'm supposed to. You do, you do great. Uh, we're not really supposed to respond to um, public I, 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 I So I'm not going to respond specifically to yep. everything you yep. said, other than to say I love your enthusiasm and your passion. You and I have worked together on several projects, <coughs> from boardwalks to bridges, trails, um, and they always end up really good, uh, whatever we touch. So we should do more of that. Um, I will say that you and I should talk um, after the meeting, anytime this week. I'll give you a call tomorrow. Um, there is some conversations going on about Memorial Pond that, um, that I am interested in that I think sound very similar to what you're interested in. So uh, you should be part of those conversations. Uh, I agree. We should um, do something over there. Doesn't have to be huge, um, but it, you know we, there's some uh, room for improvement, and uh, you should be part of the conversation. So well, I'll reach out to you. Thank you very okay. much. And it's just it's a matter of it's a little more involved than than just going over and cutting the tops off. Now we'll do something. We'll do something. Yeah. We need some shovels, a small excavator in there, and clean it out. I can legally go over there let's with, talk. The, sh with let's the shovel let's talk to, um, and dig well, it all out. Yeah. I really don't want to do that. You guys don't want to see me in my shorts <laughs> and, and get money in Memorial Pond. We appreciate you coming okay. forward and, and bringing, so bringing that to our attention. It's I the year of 300 and everything like that, so let's get 
You guys a beautiful view across the street. Uh, you got my cell phone number. We'll, we'll talk tomorrow. All right, Jim, did you have a comment that you wanted to make? I, I was just going to suggest that perhaps the Ponds Committee could bring forth a capital request so that we could actually put some actual money against this so we're not trying to do it on a I would screen. love to, but I'm not privy to what the capital is that goes I, I think we can, I can help I think we can, we, yeah. we can help with that. But that would be a, a good thing to do, and I'm pretty sure you get a lot of support for that, Ken. So, uh, so my that'd be my suggestion is let's uh, let's figure out what you, you want to get done, put a capital request, and then take it from there. All right, okay. Thank Thanks you very much. Thanks, Thank you for Thanks coming for this all evening. You do. Have a great yeah. week. All Thanks, right. Ken. Go over home. Take care. Keep up the good work. You guys are awesome. <laughs> All right, is there anyone else here this evening for open forum? I do not believe there is, so we are going to move on to new business. And we have roadway and sidewalk resurfacing. Um, so, sorry. Um, this is in regards to bid contract number 24-14. Roadway resurfacing and sidewalk improvements at various locations. Uh, I'd like to make a favorable uh, recommendation to award uh, bid contract 24-14 to J.H. Lynch and Sons, uh, who is the lowest and most responsive bidder. The total bid of two million nine hundred thirty-three thousand nine sixty-seven and seventy-five cents. Uh, I know Patrick, uh, Carl, Rick—they've all worked pretty hard on this one, along with Chris and Joe up in engineering. Um, and uh, pretty confident in these prices here. Do we have a list of um, what streets are going to be done already? Yes. Oh, how many miles? Or how many, and how many miles approximately were? Uh, we, we don't have the miles, but we have the list of streets. Yeah, that was the meeting. Okay. Yeah, that's the meeting. While you're looking that up, can I ask how this compares to previous years, 2.9? Uh, the prices are up slightly, yeah. not significantly. Um, I'm going to say like maybe five percent. Is it uh, the pricing is up five percent? But is the um, endeavor to pave about the same number of streets or miles or whatever it is about the same? Or yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this this may be a little bit less only because a lot of the streets are larger, mm -hmm. wider, longer streets. The Common Street, South Street, uh, Plimpton Street. Okay. So as we get into the main thoroughfares, it, it kind of chews through the funds a little sure. bit quicker than we would like, but yeah, been getting it done. Great. And and um, I'm sorry, one more question. No, go for it. Um, we typically add to the state funds for um, for paving. Is that right? Yeah. So I I was in terms of dollars. Yeah. This is pretty aggressive. Um, yeah. This is what we That's what took. I'm asking. I feel like it was get close to a million from the state. Then we get the supplemental 440 from them. And then we got was it one million two fifty uh, from town meeting via free yes. cash? Yeah. So this is mm -hmm. pretty 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 large portion like of that. one year. Good. Dollar value wise, I mean prices have gone up, and that's the other thing we lose out a little bit. Good. And I would say this is something that comes forward to me more often: is when will my street be paved? Um, it's a question so we get most every day. Yes. Yeah, so I I think uh, you know. Trust me, I'd love to pave every single one of them. Right. It's, as I'm sure the board would love to as well but we prioritize um, every year uh, the engineering department and highway department will go out and assess uh, sometimes our good intentions go astray because a road will unravel on us before it's it's expected to so we have to reprioritize it's it's constantly a moving target and when do we anticipate um the paving season to start and end to start this year yes. uh, sometime probably mid-may i would guess all right i'm going to have one more question not even promise that it's my last um what is the method of paving that i feel like uh, we had a conversation some time back years ago where you changed um methods is it, is it one method we didn't change methods the, method. the method is still the same it's um, uh primarily a talking about that gravel overlay. it's a different mix yeah it's a super that's, that's mix. what i meant by method i'm sorry right. material it's not the conventional asphalt it's a super paved mix that uh actually dot requires it yeah uh through the use of chapter 90. Uh, it's a bit be. more expensive so not, not significant different on like one a it was chip seal is that what you're chip saying seal is oh, what that, that chip seal yeah we haven't yeah. done that in many yeah. years yeah. right okay 
So and it's so side streets get the same. No, I'm not. I'm not. Scott. I'm not suggesting you do. So side I'm streets suggesting you do either <laughs> get the same treatment as all. All streets get the same treatment then. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. They do. It's all the same mix. It's all super pave mix. Yeah. Got it. All right. Thanks. All right. Any other questions? I'm almost an expert. All right. I'd make a motion to award bid contract 2024-14 to J.H. Lynch and Sons, Inc. I'll second it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I vote five zero zero. Thank you. Thank Without you the much. efforts of the DPW, mm -hmm. the water supply wouldn't have been available to put that fire out. Mm -hmm. I just had to throw that. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, it it's, was one of those concerns. What happens when we have a fire up there? Thank you. So, Thanks. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you, Rick. <laughs> We have uh, moving on to unfinished business. We have a few articles, I believe, from the spring 2024 town meeting. Sure. So if you don't mind, I'll give you a quick introduction. So uh, I asked the select board to consider three articles. Um, Article 2, which is the in-year budget adjustment. We're requesting a million dollars um, via free cash to go towards um, an account that Jody will set up to repair the high school roof and any other damage that we need to address or, or improvements that need to be made over the summer. Um, eventually, the funds will come in from the insurance claim. Uh, Mass General Law requires anything over 150 to close out to the general fund, which will close out to free cash. So I think we'll probably get eventually get some or a portion of it or all of it. I'm not quite sure. I think this will take a long, very long time to fi finalize this claim. but likely in FY26, but fortunately for us, we carried forward $4.2 million in free cash. This is giving us the flexibility to address this over the summer rather than wait till next year. So, Finance Committee recommended a favorable action 10 in this article. Does any members of the board have any questions on this one? All right. Uh, I would make a motion to recommend favorable action on Article 2. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We have a vote, five zero zero. Next article is the FY25 Budget Finance Committee recommended favorable action 10 0 We did go in last evening and make a few adjustments specifically to the school budget. We added uh, just about 100, uh, sorry, um, 34,000 or so to the school budget. Uh, we also added um, about $15,000 to the uh, Aggie, um, their their budgets increased a little bit. Uh, we increased the reserve fund by just about seventeen thousand dollars, and reduced the assessment of fringe benefits portion by uh, about two hundred and forty thousand dollars. Just to uh, the health insurance numbers came in a little bit lower than expected. So, FinCom voted ten zero zero on our overall budget of one hundred nineteen million seven thirty one and eighteen dollars. Does anyone have any questions concerning this? Just uh, uh, on D, the uh, the fringe benefits change. What what does that really result in in terms of the health insurance? I had budgeted ten percent. Okay. Say, um, and the rates came in lower than that. It came in lower. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. All right, good. <coughs> thanks. Which is wonderful news. It is. Uh, any other questions concerning that? All right. I would make a motion to recommend favorable action on Article Three. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We have a vote, 5-0-0. And last item is, uh, well, so for articles uh, 12 and 13, FinCom decided to hold off on their recommendation. They wanted to wait till the FinCom, or the planning board wraps up their public hearings on the MBTA communities. Um, they've already finished the inclusionary zoning, which the planning board recommended. Uh, I think it was four zero five zero, but they recommended it go forward. So they're going to do them both in one night on the 8th and so they held off on voting on that in the citizen petition they voted to refer back the petitioner came in I provided the FinCom with some background on this one and I, I know that uh, Mark and Allie are going to meet with um, the petitioner in the near future I can tell you I'm likely going to go forward with a request to the state legislator they've, they've asked for our earmarks they don't do have anything extra you'd like to ask for um, with a request for a hundred thousand dollars um, to allow us, us to offset our costs, possibly hire a consultant, come in and study that. I've actually just started working on this this evening, so um, just to kind of put that towards it to see if we can um, see what options might be up there to address some of the concerns that, may, that have come up. All right. Make a quick comment. 
Yes, go right. Sorry, this is just uh, related to the MBTA communities. It's probably better for um, the town administrator's report, but there was a public forum. Um, March 27th, that's tomorrow. Beat I believe. me to it, Glenn. It was under. Oh, sorry. Weekend. 7 o'clock. Say it again. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll reiterate it. All right, go ahead. That's it. There's a public forum tomorrow for the MBTA community, it's just so people can learn more about it. It's at the Senior Center. It's at 7 o'clock, and, uh, and it's really, if anybody has any questions, um, it's, it's a good opportunity to come in an informal setting, um, ask those questions, or just listen and understand uh, what we're doing and, and it, the impact. It won't be really so bad on Walpole. It'll be a, a positive impact, in fact. Um, I think people are worried about it. So if they're worried, they should come and ask questions and listen, and um, we can hopefully ease their concerns. All right, so those are all the articles that we're addressing this evening. It's it's so a motion to refer back um, the FinCom vote at 10-0-0. For the Article 14? Yeah. Okay, does anyone have any questions about concerns referring back that back to petitioner? No, I mean, we've talked about it at great length. Yeah. So if anyone has any questions, then please reach out because we have beaten that one up pretty good. Yeah. So I'd make a motion to refer back to petitioner Article 14. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We have a vote five zero zero. Thank All you. Right. Next item, uh, we just have consent agenda. I'd make a motion to approve the consent items as listed on the March 26th agenda. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 We have a vote five zero zero. And lastly, um, Jim, anything else to uh, sure. add for nothing? Sure. A couple of items on here. Uh, town meeting, uh, as I mentioned, we only have two, meet two articles left with planning, with, sorry, with the, fin the finance committee, um, and then the public hearing set uh, uh, towards the end of, uh, at the beginning of May. So um, they're wrapping up uh, very soon, and um, it's been a great session uh, for the spring with them. MBTA communities, we mentioned that tomorrow, the 27th at 7 p.m. in the COA. And town election date change, just an update briefly on that. Brett from Senator Rush's office contacted myself, the town clerk, and Patrick this past week to let them know the home rule petition passed the Senate, and it's on its way over to the House. They, they're optimistic that it'll move along quickly. Obviously, it won't impact this, this uh, town election season, but um, it will next year. And last one, uh, NWRA connection, myself and Rick met with Norwood officials today. Um, and they're to discuss their infrastructure needs and the cost of the project and everything. Um, I expect that I'll probably work on negotiations with their general manager in the next few weeks as to how low we could get their, their figure. I also threw out something on the table with them. The proposal that's out there now is 1 million gallons per day. I had asked them what would be the savings on just a simple emergency connection. We would still need to make the infrastructure improvements along Milan Street to to pump the water up to Walpole uh, because I believe Sharon only spent about one to one and a half million dollars on, on a simple emergency connection and that would get us through if there was a train derailment or something like that. Um, they're going to put together some numbers for us so my plan would be to basically put it in my st standard memo format and say here are the two options these are the best prices I I'm able to get from the town of Nor Norwood. Um, here's how we think it would impact the rates, option A, option B, as far as the emergency connection and the one million gallons per day. Uh, ask for a meeting with the Sewer and Water Commission, the Select Board, and the Finance Committee. I want to involve the Select Board and the Finance Committee just simply because you people are going to be uh, asked to make some tough decisions uh, prior to the fall town meeting. I want everybody in the same room making those decisions from the get-go. I know the commissioners are have, um, the elected body for this, but your board and the FinCom will be asked to weigh in, certainly, and especially with FinCom making the main motion. I want all the decision makers in the same room at the same time rather than piecemeal it well ahead of time. So, Just on, on that, the, so a million gallons a day versus the emergency connection. How many gallons per day would an emergency connection count? Sharon is, was for a million gallons per day. Their connection would be for a million gallons a day. So I think we would do something similar along those lines so so is that and maybe i'm just being thick here but no you're not i have the same question if it's a million this way and a million that way then what's going to be the difference the problem is i think and jimmy could probably answer this but the town of norwood is asking for a lot of infrastructure improvements um a lot of dollars basically the cost no, i think no, the answer I is cost. Eight, eight million bucks the emergency yeah. connection would cost less certainly um as far as infrastructure improvements just we had a, I'm just struggling with how if it's a million gallons a day they're gonna have to because we would uh, the, the way the commissioners want to proceed right now is 
I don't know our gallons per day off the top of my head. I know Norwood because it, yeah. they use about three million gallons a day. Their point to us is they'd be adding an extra third to their capacity, so they need to expand their system. We understand that along um, uh, Mylod Street and uh, Hay. I think it's Hawksbrook or Hayesbrook, but they also want some funds for Pleasant Street and for um, uh, Summer Street if we do the millions gallon per day for their infrastructure improvements basically i asked them well what if we don't do these infrastructure improvements the answer was they'll probably go another 20 years and not not do those infrastructure improvements on those two large streets because they say north uh south norwood has a real hydraulic flow issue right there that they'd be looking to improve so there could be some savings there and it's going to be a decision that everybody in the room should really make the call on. It's going to decrease the cost if we go with the emergency connection. We'd still need to make five or six million dollars in infrastructure improvements, generally around the mylod, still build the pump house and everything. I so guess I guess my immediate reaction is if I'm going to get a million gallons a day, option A or option B, why wouldn't we just go with the cheaper one? What, what are we giving up by going with the cheaper one? That's that's my point too. Okay. I mean, uh, right. cheaper okay. one is okay. the emergency connection, yeah. which I think we'll need to still spend about five six million in infrastructure improvements in yeah. Walpole. We'd still need to uh, go forward and do a little bit in Norwood, probably not as much, versus six or seven million dollars worth of improvements in Norwood. In Norwood. Yeah, I got you. For, I'm trying to figure out a way to make this more affordable yeah. because the way it's set up, if we do whatever the number is, twelve to fifteen million dollars of improvements. The rates are going to skyrocket, crazy, and right. I'm very much mindful of. I, I, I've always liked this as an emergency solution, anyway. Yeah, you know, it just seems to me. You know, we we have, we have our own water system; and it's working quite well. It is a fair question to ask. Well, what if something happens, and do we have an alternate supply? So I see this as sort of a resiliency question more than anything else. And so I, I, you know, I obviously will wait to see what you find out, but. Uh, it seems to me the emergency connection is the thing we should be shooting for. Yeah, and my plan is to present okay. everyone in the room with two options, yeah. A and B. Here's the cost, here's what we project the cost that, impact to be. And the there are, there's a C option too, which is to develop a, a separate well, yeah. which, I that's mean, true. sometimes a well can go down and then that's the emergency, but a separate well is going to have completely that's different fair. water source. So, yeah. I mean, not, let's not leave off the table the fact that there are other options. We're just, we're going down this path, yeah. and that's, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, I, just to follow on from what Jim was saying, and, and we, we're not going to solve this problem tonight, Jim, and I know that you're collecting more information, but I just would reiterate, if it's a million gallons in an emergency connection, and it's a million gallons in a permanent connection, why that costs Norwood $6 million more on their end? Is my question. They're trying to get as much as they possibly they're, can out of a spend. Their like, response to I'm me on that one was well, practically, it. yeah, it's <laughs> it's going to be constantly running to the town of Walpole. This one, there'll be a valve that that'll be shut off. It won't yeah. be constantly running. They but, won't. So, like, what what follows? Sorry to interrupt, but what follows then is like, if they're confident, they're saying that if we're going to constantly be pulling a million gallons, their system can't support it. Ergo, we need to help them make improvements to the hydraulics of their system and whatnot. But what's the difference? Then, if we do have to turn on it, and we're expecting a million, and it comes through their system, and their system can't hydraulically support it, we're not going to get a million gallons for a long, extended period of time. Okay. And that's what. We, if it's, if it's right. more than an emergency, Sharon would need to do the same. <coughs> thing. Okay. Modify their into local so that, that's, that's what yeah. the, the qualification is. It's yeah. like, yeah, we could do that for 24 hours, but any longer than that, we wouldn't be comfortable in in their own system. And I don't know if it's 24 or 30 days or whatever, okay. but it's yeah. a. A very short years. period of time. <laughs> well, I guess, that's what, I guess that's what I mean. Right? They're, I mean, they're I mean, trying to I mean, focus I mean, a little bit. Uh, I'm just, you know, it's the same. Well, that's pretty messed up, <laughs> but that's fine. That's a different discussion. Well, yeah. hopefully, Thanks. whatever your information you get back is a little bit more favorable than. I think the, the price will go down versus what we initially were quoted, but I don't know if it'll go down that much. No. Yeah. yeah. No. I just had one other thing, Ellie. Yep. Yeah. Um, just talking about the, the permanent building committee tonight, and I know that, and I didn't want to go into it when, when we were interviewing candidates and whatnot, but we know that um, the at town meeting, the RTMs had done a bylaw review, right, and, and Ali, you were part of that, and they had looked at the permanent building committee and having it go the way of the personnel board, right, insofar as it's, it's the, when it was put into effect in 1970s or 60s, it was something that was needed. It's not particularly needed anymore, given the, um, 
given the town administrators, you know, set up and personnel and also the advent of the OPM. In any event, um, that's a conversation that I hope we can pick up at, at a future town meeting. That's not something that we're going to solve tonight or, or any time, really, because it's a town meeting issue. But why I bring it up is I wonder when you look at the bylaws and it says, yeah, you have to have a permanent building committee. Um, it doesn't really say you know what they do. They don't have a charge. They don't have like a remit right from the board that appoints them, which is us. So I don't know, and I, I would welcome feedback from my fellow board members and, and Jim and Patrick, you as well. Certainly it doesn't have to be tonight, you know, maybe as we move forward. Is that, would that be a reasonable thing for us to do to help clarify the scope of what the permanent building committee is trying to do? Would it help if we gave them some direction or gave the town administrator's office some direction on what it is they should be focused on? Maybe it doesn't, maybe it hurts no. more. But as we then pull them into the high school project, we, we could also talk to them about it as well. And honestly, that's a, one of the items that the bylaw um, committee, why that never came fully forward to the town floor, was the discussion of how um, that bylaw should be written, adjusted, and items of that nature. So the bylaw committee, review committee, would I think is two years out from um, being pulled together again at town meeting to kind of go over that. Yeah, so I guess short term is, it, do, do we need to, put together some sort of charge or remit that is very clear for the PB PBC, something we can talk about. Let me know if you're interested. I could certainly help put it together. Long term, is that something that this board wants to bring back, not wait another two years for a bylaw review? Also something we can discuss. So <laughs> just wanted to bring it up. Mm -hmm. All right, any other items for this evening? Thank you. Uh, I would make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you.